Good morning, church. It's good to see everyone here this morning. We welcome visitors. We welcome people we haven't seen in a while. And uh, we welcome everybody here to Elam Lutheran Church this morning. This is one of the days when the church has a party. Um, in addition to my, to my installation, it's also Transfiguration Sunday. So it is the last time the church really gets to party until Easter morning because we are beginning next week, uh, Ash Wednesday. I know that's hard to believe. It's like when the pastor announces that Christmas is so close. Nobody can believe it, but already Ash Wednesday is coming. So it is good that you have come. There is one announcement I would like to make before we have the other announcements. Uh, Mary, that would be you, right? Yeah. Um, at the back of the church on the right hand side there's a little table and it has a card for Layla. Audrey has um, worked with someone who made the card special and um, if you can sign that and if you don't know who Layla is that's okay you can still sign the card. Uh, she is the director of the festival choir which we will have April 2nd or 5th one of those days, just keep April free. <laughs> um, she's amazing, and we love her. And uh, she lost her Hank of 66 years um, three weeks ago, so we're sending her a card. So that will also be available at my installation um, for you to sign that as well. Thank you, Mary. Good morning. Please don't forget to join us for Pastor Catherine's installation today at 2 p.m. And following that will be a reception in the fellowship hall. The offering for the installation will be divided between the Lutheran disaster response and PEP housing. Tomorrow the office will be closed in observance of President's Day. And as Pastor, Pastor Catherine mentioned, uh, Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, and all are invited to our service at 6 p.m. The Mexico, the Mexico Mission Trip Taco Lunch fundraiser is next Wednesday, next Sunday, sorry, February 26 at noon in the Fellowship Hall. And the confirmants will be meeting next Sunday for the lunch at the taco fundraiser and class afterward. The second mile giving for February goes to Elam's Mix Mexico mission trip. And please don't forget to fill out the attendance card in your pew located behind the offering envelopes. Then place the card in the offering basket. And this helps us keep an, our active member list accurate. Please read the Elam Express for more details about these and other announcements. Thank you. Would you please stand for our opening song? <laughs> Praise Him, all you say. 
there's a group that I forgot to welcome, and that is our uh, worshipers online. How about everybody turn around? We are happy that you're here worshiping with us. <laughs> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, in the transfiguration of your Son, you confirm the mysteries of the faith by the witness of Moses and Elijah, and in the voice from the bright cloud declaring Jesus, your beloved Son, you foreshadow our adoption as your children. Make us heirs with Christ of your glory, and bring us to enjoy its fullness. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Sorry. A reading from the book of Exodus, the 24th chapter. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment, which I have written for their instruction. So Moses set out with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. To the elders he had said, Wait here for us until we come to you again. For Aaron and her are with you. Whoever has a dispute may go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel? gospel for this festival Sunday of the transfiguration of our Lord is found in the gospel according to St. Matthew, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days after Peter had acknowledged Jesus as the Christ, the son of the living God, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And Jesus was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Suddenly, then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, 
they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, and would the children please come forward for the children's message. How are you, Nathan and Emily and Waylon? It's good to see you all. Um, so whenever you see the altar or the pastor wearing white, it's always a clue that that's a big party Sunday. Yeah. Are you going to go see your mom or are you going to stay here? Why don't you stay here, Catherine? These are so cute moccasins. So today's a party. It's called Transfiguration Sunday. Do you want to try to say that big word? It's about this long. Transfiguration. Yeah, it's kind of a word that we don't use in every day of our lives. Um, you going to stay here, Catherine? What if I held her? Would that, would that be good? Would she let me do that? Yeah, yeah, we don't know. You always just have to see. Yeah, okay, there we go. So, transfiguration was Jesus went up on this big mountain and Moses and Elijah showed up. And the disciples were like, what is happening? And it is also the last Sunday in the church year that we can sing or say, Alleluia. Why don't you say Alleluia about a hundred times right now? Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Yeah, we are actually going to sing a song because... Miss Warren and I, we do chapel for three and four year olds, and we're going to have one side sing. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, it's actually your mom's side. Hallelujah, <laughs> And then on this side, which is Emily and Nathan's mom's side, they're, they're going to sing Praise Ye the Lord. But every time they sing, here's the deal they're going to stand up. Now, let me tell you, the adults don't always get this correct. And is that okay? Yes, because you don't have to be perfect in church because God knows we're not perfect and because the whole church is wrapped up in God's grace. God, God says, hey, I know you and I love you and I forgive you and you're my child. I love you. Yeah, mm -hmm. mama. So we're going to sing this song and then we're going we're gonna to talk about the Alleluia banner. Okay, all right. Um, I'm going to put her down, and we're going to see what happens. Okay. Oh, all right. Okay. She's just looking at everybody. Okay, not falling. Okay, all right. So, Junie, you want to get on this side with uh, Paul? I'm going to enlist your services. Do you know the song? Oh, you don't know it? <gasps> okay, anybody who's ever been to Vacation Bible School knows this song, so we'll help you, Paul. Uh, Lucas, you want to be on this side? You're the Alleluia side. Uh, Waylon and Emily and Nathan, you want to be on this side? Catherine's going to just be what she wants to be because that's what she's doing right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Harper, you want to be with us or you want to sit there with... Okay. So they're going to start and everybody's going to stand... Whoa. Okay. Here, here. Yeah. Let, okay. Okay. All right. How about... How, she's kind of heavy. We don't need to... Yeah, hold her. Okay. I'll just hold her. Okay. All right, okay. We're standing up.
Yeah? Emily's not sure. They did a pretty good job. Okay, but you're coming this way because we don't really want them to see, but I'm going to show you. This is the pulpit where people read from the Bible. And I also preach here. And it's where we're going to hide the Alleluia banner. So, Waylon, can you take this and put it underneath that stool? Can you just pick that up? You can turn it upside down. I turn it upside down. No, not the stool, the paper. Yeah, okay, great. Okay. Okay, okay. Now, we're not going to tell them where it is, okay? And what day do you think we're going to get the Alleluia banner? It's the day when we can finally sing and say Alleluia in the church, and it starts with an E. Right. Is that what you were going to say? Yes, that's so great, right? Hey, let's pray right here. They're, they kind of can't see us here. It's kind of cool, right? Okay. Let's fold our hands and bow our heads. You don't always have to do this when you pray, but we usually do it in the church. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus thank you so much. Thank you so much. For this beautiful day. Thank you so much. For my friends at church. Thank you so much. For loving us. So much. We ask all of these things. In Jesus' name. All God's children say, Amen. And let's say the other A word, Alleluia. Yeah, we, we can still say it today. Yeah, okay. You can go be seated now, okay? Oh, yeah, we say it on Easter. We sing it on Easter. Thanks, Waylon. So I asked Lauren at the beginning of the day, at the beginning of this morning, if she could play that while we uh, sing it. And she said, oh yeah, I've been singing that very same song for the past three weeks before they come up for the children's message. I didn't even notice that. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you, Lauren. You may have noticed that the gospel reading was just a smidgen different. We have... Dun, 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 dun. We have a gospel book here at Elam Lutheran Church. Barb and Rick gave this to me as an installation present for Elam. And it's probably the kind of thing that pastors get excited about. But if you would like to come up and look, it's really your book too. You may come and look. It has all of the gospel readings for three years in it with gold on all sides, three sides. So... I am very excited about this. Let us pray. God of grace and God of glory, empower us with courage to get up and not be afraid. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Abraham Heschel, a Jewish philosopher, said these words, our goal should be to live life in radical amazement. Get up in the morning and look at the world in a way which takes nothing for granted. Everything is phenomenal. To be spiritual is to be amazed. Sometimes, when we think of spiritual, we might think of being introspective of being contemplative, of being quiet, perhaps following our own path. But being spiritual can also be to be amazed. Probably when Peter, James, and John woke up on that morning, on that day that Jesus said, hey, you want to go for a hike with me to the top of that mountain? On that day, they didn't think that they would wind up being quite as amazed as they were. 
Now, the Bible doesn't tell us why those three disciples were chosen. And many biblical scholars tell us because they were the inner circle. And we hear about them more than we do the other disciples. Some people think it's because they were the strongest disciples. But I was reading recently, and a professor from Luther Seminary, Dr. Caroline Lewis, she grew up in Tiburon in Marin County. She says, maybe, just maybe, they were chosen not because they were the strongest in their faith, but because they were the most clueless in their faith. And even if they are super disciples, they still don't get it. All through the Gospel of Matthew, we see instances of the disciples not getting it. Now, I learned when I was in divinity school that each Gospel writer has a certain perspective, and each one, it would be a fun study to do, kind of portrays the, the disciples in a little different way. Well, the disciples in Matthew are really not that with it. They're always asking Jesus, that parable that you just took, that you just said, uh, could, you, could you explain it to us? Because we didn't get it. They're, they're always showing that they didn't understand. Let me give you a few examples. Up on the mountain, that day when there were 5,000 people, and Jesus said to the disciples, um, they're hungry. And so the disciples went out and were thinking, well, maybe we'll get some food from people. So they got five loaves of bread and three fish. They brought it back to Jesus and they said, uh, no way are we going to be able to feed these people. You see, they didn't think anything could happen with five loaves, three fish, and Jesus present. Right after that, Jesus climbs up another mountain. There are a lot of mountains in Matthew, and the reason is because he was writing to a community of Jewish people. And every time Jesus went up to a mountain, this little thing clicked in their brains, and they said, Moses and Mount Sinai and God. So they made the connection that Jesus was like a new Moses. Well, on that mountain, they said to Jesus... I kind of think they sounded like maybe, I don't know, sorry, sorry for the teenagers, but like a teenager coming home from school, is there isn't anything to eat in this house. So they said to Jesus, they're, they're hungry again. How are we going to feed them? It doesn't say that Jesus said anything at that point, but I bet you he thought, huh, I wonder, what do you think? The disciples doubt Jesus. They doubt themselves as effective disciples. They lack faith and they are afraid. I don't know about you, but it sounds a little bit like us at times. Our lives as Christian people are filled with times of fear, times of doubt, times of faithlessness. In our gospel today, it's mainly fear. Amazement, too, but grounded in good old-fashioned terror. They see Moses, which we could say represents the law. They see Elijah, representing the prophets. But these guys have been dead for a really long time. And then they see Jesus, but he doesn't exactly look like Jesus because he's all lit up. He's kind of on fire. And if that isn't enough, they hear this voice booming out from the heavens. This is my son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Well, at that point, those poor disciples, they did what any self-respecting disciple would have done. And remember, these are 15, 16-year-old guys. They fell to the ground because they were, they were terrorized. They couldn't believe what they had just seen and heard and maybe felt, we don't know, but was Jesus kind of putting out some kind of heat factor with all that light? They are overcome by fear. 
And so what does their rabbi do? By Catherine. <laughs> you can come back, Catherine. I didn't mean to say goodbye forever. We love children in worship. What does the rabbi do? Does Jesus chide them? Does Jesus pull out a whiteboard and say, let me give you 10 characteristics of a disciple. You don't have any of them. Does Jesus punish them? What does Jesus do? No. He doesn't do any of those things. Here's what he does, and here's what he says. They're lying on the ground, remember? He reaches down to them. It doesn't say in the Bible, but I imagine he kneels next to them, and he touches them. Their rabbi touches them. They're lying on the ground. There's dust in their mouth because they're gasping for fear. And he comes down and touches them. And then he says those words that the angels were always saying in the Bible. Do not be afraid. And then he says, get up. Only in the Greek... It's actually be raised. He's asking them to have their own little mini resurrection. It's only Matthew 17. We've got quite a few chapters to go before we hit Jesus' resurrection. Do not be afraid. Get up. Be raised. Don't live in fear. I'm here to give you joy and courage. The disciples are being raised up out of their fear. Our lives as Christians will have times of doubt, fear, faithlessness. We will have times of suffering and not seeing very clearly during those times, not seeing with eyes of faith. Our lives of faith will also have times of glory, times when we clearly sense God's presence. And I love hearing stories from you. I often will hear someone say, and then, and then I can't describe it, and I know they're going to talk to me about something mystical. Then they say, I just felt God right beside me. We'll have those times. And Maybe we won't hear God's voice, and maybe we won't get all lit up, but we'll sense the glory of God is with us. Jesus says to us today, get up, be raised, do not be afraid. I thought about asking you to stand up at this point, but then I remembered, well, they've already stood up, sat down, stood up, sat down for that lovely song. So just imagine standing up and Jesus saying, I am the Christ who will be with you today. I am the Christ who, be, who will be with you when you are faithless and doubting. I am the Christ who will be with you in your time of doubt and will lead you into the light. In a few hours for those of us that are able to come, we'll have another mountaintop experience. We'll be here in this sanctuary celebrating the installation of your new pastor. We'll be here and we'll be up on the mountain. We'll sense God's glory in the hymns, in the songs, in the prayers, in the fellowship together. And then we'll come back into our homes, and in three days, we'll come back, 6 o'clock, Wednesday night, and get the sign of the cross in ashes made on our forehead. I'll stand out front for a few hours and give anybody ashes. I, I do wear my white robe, so it looks sort of like something churchy is happening, but people will be like, what is all this about? Oh, it's Ash Wednesday. Once last year, Six boys got, drove by on their bicycles, and I yelled out, hey, you guys want any ashes? 
And one boy stopped and he said, yeah, I do. And then I heard the other boys saying, come on, we got to get going. Ah, oh, I hope they come by this year. And I hope they listen to that boy. Yeah, I want ashes, he said. I think before we begin our Lenten journey, the church has done a good job putting us in Transfiguration Sunday, having a party, being up on a mountain, seeing the glory of God through Christ, hearing God's voice, and then hearing Jesus say, get up, be raised, do not be afraid, I'm here with you, and oh, by the way, I'm going to lead the way, so just follow me my child. Amen. And as you are able. From the cloud you speak, what was veiled now is seen. Jesus, the image of the invisible God, divinity confirmed in the transfigured world, a kingdom once Sealed on the earth now revealed. Holy is the Lord revealed before my eyes, and my learning heart can scarcely take it in. As I behold.
may be seated for the prayers. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Embolden your church as it witnesses to the majesty and mercy of your Son. Equip lay preachers, deacons, and pastors. Move us to share our stories of your faithfulness and forgiveness. May our lives proclaim your greatness. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Almighty God, grant your comfort to the people of Turkey and Syria. Strengthen our ELCA disaster response and all other rescue and relief agencies who are assisting the wounded and bringing water and food to all those who are homeless and in need. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Guide and give wisdom to all in authority. Mayor Kevin and local leaders, Governor Gavin and state legislators, President Joe and national legislators. Bring freedom and justice to all nations. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Bless all those who are in need of physical, mental, and spiritual healing. Bring comfort to all the students, faculty, and staff at Michigan State University following the shooting there of the three students, and also those killed in Mississippi. Bring peace to their families. We also pray for Lini, Renata, Christina, Robin, Ray, Connie, Karen, Dave, Nancy, Lily, Lou, Vicki, Len, Tom, Jim, Irene, Carl, Diane, Richard, and those we name silently and aloud. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Make us eager to receive your word in scripture. Help us recognize Jesus' voice in the needs of our neighbors. Make us confident to follow the way of the cross. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive our thanksgiving for the holy ones who have guided us in faithfulness and gathered even the unlikely as your people. With our forebears in faith and all who have hoped in you, Teach us to wait with courage until the promised day dawns. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Oh God, bless all those celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, and celebrations of all kinds this week. Fill our hearts with love and acceptance. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O oh God trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. <coughs> Amen.
Let us pray. Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You we magnify and adore through Jesus our Savior. Amen. Would you please stand for the passing of the peace? The peace of God be with you always. Would you pass God's peace to your sisters and brothers in Christ? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And you who are worshiping with us online, you may take your bread, the body of Christ, given for you. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me, and you at home, the blood of Christ, shed for you. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lutheran Church, all are welcome to come forward to receive Holy Communion. We have gluten-free uh, wafers. We also have grape juice, if you would prefer that over wine. The grape juice is the lighter color. The gifts of God for the people of God come, for all is now ready. In the meantime, you may be seated, and Richard and Nancy will direct you forward.
Please stand as you are able. Let us pray together. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. And now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
follow the way of Jesus. Thanks be to God. And come back if you can. <laughs> Two o'clock.